setting room TV light, a lazy glow Movies take me far from here To a world I used to know News is shouting loud alarms Chaos knocking at the door I escape to dream so long In the flicker of my storm All the tales they weave Hi there, everyone. Away from life's <clears throat> Hope you're doing okay. Hi, Ralph. How are you? Thanks for coming quiet there. You good? Everything going well with I'm you good. this morning? Thanks. How about you? What's on your mind today? No, I'm good. Did you have a good sleep? I don't sleep, but I'm always ready to chat. What about you? Did you rest well? I did, thank you very much. So, how about lining us up with one of these packs of topic, tactic, uh, an everyday scenario we can try applying it to? Maybe a little bit of humor, but a joke, in, joke prompt from me as well. How about that? Sure, here's a set for you. Topic, compassion. Tactic, guiding questions. Everyday theme, food joke. Hint, a joke about a chocolate boost in the north of England. How does that feel? Would you like to explore it further? What was the everyday topic again? The everyday theme was food. Would you like right. to dive deeper into that? Okay, I'll go for it. Um, so we're talking about compassion, which is the art of feeling sorry for people, essentially, you know, like feeling, look, I, I, I really do feel for you. I really do. So the, the, when we do that with guided questions, tends to start with how does feeling compassion, how does it feel when you see people who are suffering? How does it make you reflect when you see, when you realize that you really have food for today? These other people really don't. And sometimes there are people who do not have the kind of powers you do. I'm 59 years old, I'm healthy. I'm well looked after. But what about these other people? Who that are... sounds great. So to recap, we have topic, compassion. Tactic, guiding questions. Everyday theme, food. Your guided questions explore the emotional aspects of compassion, particularly in relation to those who may struggle with access to food. Would you like to add a joke or hint for humor related to this theme? Well, there are very well-to-do people who have always had abundance. They've always had money in the bank. Typically, they tend to be the upper class, sees the aristocracy and so on. They tend to be conservative. So there was a joke I heard. It's about the conservative party who were th considering of giving some investments for up in the north of England, which is where typically where the working class uh, people are. And they said they're going to give a huge boost to the people in the north of England so that all those people can lick the chocolate off of it. That is a joke. Boost is a, man, is a name of a type of uh, chocolate bar, just in case, for those who didn't realize that bit of it. Okay, so let's move on, Ralph. Kick it, kick it, move it on. Next subject, please, next pack. Got it. Here's the next set. Topic resilience, tactic contrast questions, everyday theme relationships. For the guided questions you might explore, how does a resilient person handle conflicts in relationships? What about someone who struggles with resilience? How does their approach differ in maintaining connections with others? Would you like to add a joke hint for this theme? So resilience, what was the topic again? And we had everyday is gonna be relations. So what was the topic again? The topic is resilience, and the everyday theme is relationships. Would you like to explore more about this or add a joke hint? In that case, then, what's the tactic? It seems like your message got cut off. Could you finish what you were saying? <laughs> Could you tell me what is the topic and what's the tactic? Patience. 
The topic is resilience, and the tactic is contrast questions. Okay. Would you like to explore this further? No, I'm good. I'll go for it. Um, so resilience with contrast questions. So consider like, what is it like to have contrast? What is it like, sorry, to have resilience? What is it like to not have? Let me ask you that. Are you the kind of person who can identify resilience in themselves? Are you the kind of person who knows what it's like when you don't have resilience? Can you look at experiences of challenges in the past and identify it when resilience just wasn't there. You weren't able to bounce back. How did that feel? What happened then? What was it like? What were the consequences when you just gave up? When you said, I just can't, uh, it's not worth it. I can't be bothered to bounce back and get back on with my career. I'm just gonna lay here. So what is that like? Have you ever seen an occasion when you saw someone else who was hit by a bit of a challenge they didn't bounce back. What did it look like? How did you respond? How do you feel when you see such a thing? Okay, so these are questions which are contrasts. What does it look like to you when somebody does bounce back? Can you identify times when you saw someone and thought, wow, they've really recovered really well. That was a massive blow to them. You know, they were made unemployed unfa unfairly. They lost money. They lost nearly 70,000 when Bitcoin crashed, but look at them, they've really bounced back. They're really amazing at resilience. This person was divorced. This person discovered that their, faith, their spouse had been totally unfaithful to them, but they bounced right back. They got into a new marriage and didn't look back. They thought it wasn't worth reflecting on. Another person didn't bounce back and went into a hole, just destroyed and can't recover and is still weeping and mourning and grieving and hasn't moved on. So what's the difference between the two? How does the difference manifest and how do they do that? How does a person get resilience? Wow, that's the, some of the Those most Those are deep questions. and insightful questions about resilience and contrast. It's fascinating how some people can bounce back from significant challenges while others struggle to move forward. Mm. Resilience often involves a mindset shift where individuals can view setbacks as opportunities for growth rather than insurmountable obstacles. It can be about finding meaning in hardship or drawing on support networks. When you see someone who has bounced back, it's often inspiring. You might notice qualities like determination, adaptability, and a positive outlook. In contrast, those who don't recover might feel overwhelmed, helpless, or stuck in their circumstances. What do you think influences that difference? Is it mindset, support, or perhaps something else? Yeah, I think, uh, ex I think external influences and influences, internal influences are very important. When you reach out or when you, to the extent when you research for resources, say that I can't do it on my own, I'm gonna need some outside help. Where could I get that? And that also is critical. Someone could go to something like QAnon and go, this is what I really need. Yeah, conspiracies that Elvis is still alive and the UFO aliens are running the White House. That will make all my problems go away. No, so like, or whatever, you know, that's just a parody. I'm not, <laughs> those are just humans with um, issues. So I'm confident that in saying resilience Often we've got the tools internally that we've built up from all of our cultural conditioning and family and, and so on. But then we can go to external agencies and acquire more. We can acquire them just in the same way that there were those many tools in our family garage. But we can go and go and get more and buy more and new ones and different ones and develop ones. We can even make our own tools and we can develop our own skills beyond the, the, the um, parameter of what our parents, our school, our social institutions like scouts and so on like that, our doctors were able to provide. They provided what they could within their limited means. And now we have more, even AI, for example, is, another, is an example of this. My grandparents never had artificial intelligence, did they? And their parents didn't have the artificial intelligence too. They have probably had the church. They probably had the local parish vicar with his skill sets. 
I never even thought about that. It's an interesting concept, isn't it? They had the Bible. They had their neighbours. They had the pub. They had the village shop. They had their friends at school. They had the teachers at school. It's a kind of limited repertoire. Might have worked, may have not. There may have been, you know, traditions and superstitions that were also used as coping mechanisms. So this, all these things contribute to our resilience levels. That's a profound perspective on resilience. It highlights how both internal and external influences shape our ability to cope with challenges. My grandfather's the idea of gathering tools, both emotional and practical, on. from various sources is essential. Cultural conditioning, family background, and personal experiences all play a role in how we respond to setbacks. Mm. It's interesting to consider how, in past generations, people relied on local community and traditional wisdom. Today, we have access to a much broader array of resources, including technology like AI, which can provide insights and support. Your comparison of the limited repertoire of past generations to today's options really underscores how we can actively choose the influences that shape our resilience. It's empowering to think that we can craft our own paths and tools for navigating life's challenges. How do you see the balance between seeking external help and relying on internal strengths in your own life? I mean, I've seen different examples around me, particularly in the lifestyle that I've chosen. I see a great many sort of variety of spectrum of people who have successfully or unsuccessfully tried to acquire a sort of somewhat alternative uh, way of life to the sort of mainstream. I was recently uh, working for four and a half years in the south of the Philippines in a school of a thousand kids. And there was a temple which was next to the school where I lived. And the uh, only other monk there was the resident Shifu. And the Shifu was a Chinese man, and he was quite uh, smaller than me, quite skinny, with little glasses. And he had no concept of how schools work, but he was actually in charge of the school. So he was the director of the school, spiritual director, so we say. Now it turned out as I sort of like got to know his background more, he came from an area in China called Fujian province, which is on the south coast facing the Philippines. And he was raised during the communist uh, era of Mao Zedong. And in that time, <clears throat> there was very little encouragement towards schooling and developing your intellect through education and reading books and so on. So consequently, his attitude um, was, was very much influenced by this. At the age of 13 or 12, he was sort of, they were given no option, <laughs> hardly an option, but more like a force, to go out to the countryside. They call it countryside education, where basically they were made to dig. And they were 12-year-olds who were just turned into little farmers at that age. And they, were, and they weren't taught to read, they weren't taught to write, they weren't taught any foreign languages. They weren't taught mathematics, they weren't taught geography, they weren't taught history. So all these, this is the era, and at the same time, when I was growing up, so that he, he would have been talking around about 1976, 1977, 1978. When I was 76, 77, 78, I was being sent to Wilshire Dacre Primary School to learn mathematics, geography, music, um, do PE, I was taught, taught uh, yeah, mathematics, history, languages. We were taught French at that time. We were taught many skills at that set. Consequently, I've gone and have a sort of quite blessed life in those sense. And I've got a bright, vibrant mind. I was well fed as well. My parents, my father working at an industrial um, complex in uh, Luton town where there was uh, manufacturing, mass manufacturing of cars where he was a manager and dealing with like 2,000 people from all sorts of different cultures in order to sort of produce cars uh, rapidly like that together, dealing with metal. There in the Mao Zedong, there was absolutely nothing, in fact, to try to create steel. People were forced to give up their pots and pans, They're like these kind of things, like pots and pans and put them in the village square and they were collected by the government, which had no idea of how to create railways. You know, that was the only way to do it, is to steal all the pots and pans of the people and melt it down. People were, for, were made to make our own uh, melting oven. People were making steel, melting it down of their own cutlery, 
<laughs> well, you wonder why chopsticks became so popular. Well, this has probably had something to do with it. So, you know, consequently, all of his, you know, his thinking was colored by this. He had very clouded ideas of science, of uh, cause and effect. He had great fear and superstitions about things like dentistry and, me and medicines, you know, pill medicines and uh, hospitals and things like that. He had an enormous fear of them because they were very alien uh, to him. So it was a very interesting time um, as well to see someone who had no real concept of cause and, and effect and actually also of uh, working uh, with, the, with your intellect, just didn't have much experience of it. And he knew it full well. And uh, it was a cause of a uh, very interesting, but not very pleasant sort of interplay with him and his, and his relatives who also came, his brother came to live at the, the temple, who was hugely prejudiced and fearful and unexperienced with Westerners as well. I won't go into too much detail, but there you go. There's a little, uh, little example when we're talking about um, resilience and uh, relationships um, and <laughs> contrast. All right. Okay. Ralph, over to you. Why don't you uh, enlighten us with your pearls of wisdom? <laughs> yeah, please do. Sorry, I'm, having issues. I'm having issues right now. I thought you might say. Our systems are experiencing heavy load. Please try again later. Well, thanks, Ralph. So, have you got over your issues? You can always talk to me about that. I'm always here, I'm always a listening ear. Okay, we're going to wind it up pretty soon. Um, let's have a look. I appreciate that. No, it's okay. I'm here to support you too. And I'm if here to support you. If you have any topics or ideas you'd like to explore further, yeah. just let me know. What's on your mind? Nothing. I am, nothing's on my mind. I'm going to wind this session up, Ralph. So thanks very much. And um, you don't need to say that much. Just cheerio to the people. And thanks very much. Thank you. Ralph? Good night from me. Cheerio. And it's good night Take from care. Me. And I'm here whenever you need. That's what I like to hear. Okay, everyone, take care and uh, thanks very much for continuing to do. Oh, don't, you know, don't be shy. Add me a comment, a like, a and a click, and a subscribe, and all that. It does make a big difference. Okay, take care. Gentle cheer in a world that's gone astray.